Hi, my name is Vince Cerf. I'm Google's chief internet evangelist and uh, sometimes known as one of the fathers of the internet. Well, as a child, I used to take uh, the vacuum cleaner apart to find out how it worked, and then I felt obligated to put it back together, and whenever I did that, I always have a bolt or a nut left over, but it worked anyway, which impressed me. Then I got to taking apart the, uh, the washing machine because my, my mother's stockings would get stuck inside the impeller, and I would put it back together. So I always had this interest in how things worked, and I'm pretty sure that drove a lot of my interest in the future. Uh, well, as a young boy, I was fascinated by chemistry uh, in the 1950s when you could get really cool chemicals in a chemistry set. Um, I did a whole bunch of things, including thermite grenades and other stuff like that. So I was fascinated by uh, mathematics as well. And before the internet, uh, I was doing work uh, with a time-sharing system that we had to reach by a dial-up modem and an ancient uh, teletype machine. So the answer is, the pre-internet days created huge frustration which drove the desire to do something a lot faster. You know, if you try to figure out who, you know, think about the people we remember from a thousand years ago. This is kind of tricky. I mean, we remember Aristotle and you know, other famous Greeks. My guess is that if anybody's remembered a thousand years from now on the technology side, it'd probably be Bill Gates. Not just because of what he did with Microsoft, but more important, his philanthropy afterwards. But I will say that uh, maybe people will remember Alan Turing, maybe John von Neumann who have passed away, but they made huge contributions in the field I'm in, in computer science. So the energy industry uh, has been working in this space. There's something called the Smart Grid Interoperability Program, which is set up by the Department of Energy and Department of Commerce to try to create a framework of standards that would allow all these various energy consuming devices to accept control as in please don't use an energy for the next you know 10 minutes or would report information back we don't have a coherent set of standards yet so that still needs to be done but the most important challenge for the energy industry is that a lot of energy is going to be generated by the consumers with solar power and wind power. And so we have this really complicated system coming, which not only has centralized power generation, but also distributed power generation. Making that system stable is going to be a big technical challenge. Well, the clear biggest challenge is getting rid of our use of fossil fuels because of the global warming problem that that's created. On the other hand, uh, I think reintroducing uh, nuclear energy may turn out to be another big challenge. There's hope, though, that we can go from the uh, typical atomic power generation, using you know, things like uranium and stuff, uh, to fusion power. And I've seen some progress in fusion power in the last, let's say, five years which gives me real optimism that we can bypass the whole radioactive environment and do something uh, which is much more powerful and much less costly. Well, one thing I can see about artificial intelligence is that it can be used to help us manage our resources better. You know, just simply, you know, feedback to us the consequences of our choices of lifestyle. So uh, artificial intelligence can be responsive to our um, desires. You know, I want it to be warmer or cooler or, you know, the, the, please don't use energy when it looks like there's going to be a brownout and things like that. 
But I think that artificial intelligence has a much bigger role to play in the long run, not so much in energy generation, but maybe in the management of energy production and distribution. Well, so this is an interesting question because Ray Kurzweil is the one who wrote The Singularity is Near. And by the way, he works at Google along with 62,000 of the rest of us. Um, I'm, I have to admit, that, uh, while I agree with um, Ray's sense that we have this ascending spiral, you know, rapidly uh, improving computing capability, I'm not yet 100% sure that we will reach the singularity that he uh, suggests. And I think he wants to upload himself into a computer when it finally gets uh, that good and then go off and roam the galaxy. Uh, I think Elon is uh, worried about AI. Uh, Stephen Hawking has made similar concerns. I am not as negative about artificial intelligence. I see it uh, as primarily a helpful tool for us to exercise. Machines can do things faster and better than we can in certain domains. We just had a good example of that. Uh, Google's Deep uh, Mind uh, group in London uh, wrote a, a system, a neural network system called AlphaGo, which run f won four out of five Go games from an international grandmaster. So um, I see AI as a tool for us to use as something that we collaborate with. So it gets things done faster than we can in certain domains, and we do things better than those machines do, including things like pattern recognition. So I think this is a partnership, and I don't see this as a big, scary, you know, phenomenon.